Hey, and welcome back to another video. And in today's video, we're actually going to carry on looking at a new feature in SwiftUI 3.0, iOS 15 and Xcode 13. But in this video, we're going to look at how we can actually add a potent refresh easily into our SwiftUI apps. So what we're going to go through is going to look at the new refreshable modifier that's been given to us and also look at some new environment values that we can use to interact with these new refresh capabilities. So let's get started. So as usual, if you want to follow along, the link for this starter project is actually on GitHub, which I'll leave in the description box below so you can follow along. But if we just briefly, just quickly just look at our application here, you can see here that we've got a screen that says pull me down to generate a new character or a new person. So what we're going to do is when someone actually pulls down to pull to refresh, we're going to add someone into the list. And we just got a simple view model. If we just click into it with an sort of, uh, array of data and um, a publish property people, which is what we're going to use to add our people into our list. So the first thing that we need to do is we actually need to create a function to actually interact with the pull to refresh um, capability. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to write out the signature for this function and just break it down. Cool. So we've got a function here called generate person. So we want this um, function generate person to do what it says, which is to add a new person into the list. So what we're going to do is within our function, we're going to wrap that functionality to append to the array within a with animation block. So the reason why we're using the with animation block is so that when we add someone new into the list, we get a nice animation with Swift UI uh, for free. So let's do that now. So as you can see, we've done that. And in order to actually use this, you need to make sure that you import Swift UI at the top of your file. So what we're going to do now is actually use this within our refreshable modifier. So if we just go into our content view, what we'll do is on our people view, we're actually going to attach the pull to refresh here. So let's do that now. Okay, so if we just test out what we've got so far, I'm just going to pull this down. And as you can see, it's actually adding our random people to our screen based on our pull to refresh. But as you can see, it's actually very, very quick and you don't really get to see the animation because of how quick it's adding it into the array so in order to simulate like a network request where you have to wait a couple of seconds what we're actually going to do is we're actually going to put the thread to sleep for a bit and almost simulate like we're waiting for a response so we're going to turn our generate person function into an asynchronous function so let's do that now so let's go into our view model and the first thing we're going to do is we're going to mark our generate person with the async keyword, like so, to say that we want this function to be async. And then what we're going to do is we're going to use the task. Um, and then we're going to use a task to create a new asynchronous task and also put the thread to sleep. So let's do that now. So we're creating a brand new task here. We're setting the thread to sleep for one and a half seconds. And then once it resumes itself, we're then going to add the person into the list with an animation. So this is essentially kind of simulating a network request where you have to wait for a response from the service. So let's go back into our view and where we have the async, we need to now mark this with await being called using the async keyword. We need to await um, the result. So, so now if we run this and pull, pull down to refresh, you'll see that we get a nice animation and we have the two second delay. So I'm just going to do that again. Ta da. Do it again. Sweet. So we've got that. Okay. So we've done that, which is good. But what about in some cases where you actually need to call? um the pull to refresh modifier or the refresh action from within like a child view so let's say for example you had a view um within this content view that needs to trigger this refresh action so what we can actually do is use an environment value provided to us by swift ui which lets us actually do this so if we just go to the documentation it's actually this refresh which is a refresh action that allows us to actually call and trigger the refreshable modifier 
So what we're going to do is we're going to add this into our people view and add a toolbar action to it. So when you tap it, it will start the refresh action and add a new person into the list with the nice animation. So let's do that now. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm actually going to pin this so I can actually just view the whole app when I'm editing my people view. And then what we're going to do is go into our people view. And then the first thing we're going to do is actually add in some toolbar actions to the navigation bar header um, and specifically a refresh icon. So let's do that now. So now we've got our toolbar um, and at the top, we specify that we just want to add a button and we want the image to be the arrow clockwise. So it's almost like a refresh icon. So the next thing we need to do is actually use the refresh action within this view. So let's do that now. So now what we need to do is actually use this within our toolbar. So let's do that. So what we're saying here is our refresh action, if you actually look into the documentation for it, so our refresh action here is actually an optional. So what we can actually do is we can actually check to see if the refreshable modifier has actually been applied onto the parent view. And if it has, then we can actually unwrap this value. So if we can unwrap this and actually get a value out of it, then we can assume that this view, the parent actually has that modifier applied onto it. So if it doesn't, then what we're going to do is we're not actually going to show this toolbar um, item at all. So what we're going to do in the button now is we're actually going to call the refresh action when someone taps this button. So let's do that now. And you can notice, if you notice here, we're actually calling it almost like a function. And because refresh action is actually used within an async um, context whenever we're using it, you have to make sure that we actually await the refresh action. So in order to do that, what we're going to do is add in a task modifier and use the await keyword. like so and then finally what we're going to do is we're going to actually give someone some user feedback that something's going on so what i want to do is that in our view model if it is loading then rather than me showing this button i actually want to show like a progress view instead so what we're going to do is in our people's view model we're going to create a new published property called is loading and we're just going to set it to true or false within our generate person so let's do that now all right, cool. So let's break this down. So we have our published property is loading and it's set to false because obviously when the view loads for the first time, it's not loading anything. And then the next thing that we do is that we have a task where we set it's loading to true because it is starting to fetch that data and load it. We then set the thread to sleep for one and a half seconds. And then once that's resumed and it stopped sleeping, it's woken up, we're going to use an animation to add a person into the um, list or the array. And then we're going to set is loading back to false. So what we need to do is actually use this is loading property within our people view to switch between our button and our progress view. So let's do that now. Cool. So what I've done here is we've just got our refresh content now. So I decided to actually move this out because I thought that this was getting pretty big. So I've created a computed property here um, using the build, but view builder to essentially check if our refresh action has the action applied onto it. And depending on the state of is loading, if it's true or false, we'll either return a progress view or the button that you see on your screen here. So what we're going to do now is actually click this button and see what happens. So if we tap it, we get our progress view. And as you can see, it adds a new person to our list. So if we do that again, you can see that we get our visual feedback and you know it's still working the same as it normally does like so so we got everything that we wanted and as you can see when we pull down to refresh you can see that we get our loading spinner there and it does what it needs to do which is what we want okay cool so there is one last change i would like to make so in our people's view model what we need to do and what we need to make sure that we're doing is that we actually put our updates onto the main actor. So what we're going to do is on our people view model, we're just going to go onto the class here and we're just going to annotate it with main actor. Now you may be wondering why have I done this and what is the need for doing it? Well, we're actually essentially updating data from a concurrent thread. So a thread that isn't on the main thread and we're appending to our array people now, because this is not on the main thread, it's potentially could cause some kind of crashes. So 
So by us marking our class with the main actor, we ensure that whenever we add a new person into the array, the UI updates are handled on the main thread so we don't get a data race issue and all UI operations. So whenever you're updating UI, it should always happen on the main thread. That's why we need to use the main actor. Also as well, just going back to our generate person function, we're going to want to refactor it a bit to make sure that is loading is equal to true is the first thing that happens. And then we need to make sure that it follows this or else we get a weird bug that I'm not too sure why it's happening. So let's actually run this on the simulator and see what happens. All right, cool. So now if I hit the refresh button, you can see that we get the refresh icon and it does what it needs to do. And likewise, if I pull down, you can see that the portal refresh and the refresh action updates. And we don't actually have any warnings here telling us about how we're updating our UI on a thread that isn't the main thread because we're specifying that we want to place our UI updates back onto the main actor. So in this video, we've covered how to use the refreshable modifier. We've also looked at some environment values. So that's everything from me in today's video. As usual, I'd appreciate hearing your feedback as well. So if you have any feedback, you can leave it in the comment section below. Or if you have any video suggestions that you'd like to see, I'd love to hear it from you in the comment sections as well. Also on top of that, if you appreciate this video, then give it a thumbs up. And if you haven't already, subscribe to the channel and hit the notification bell to get updates for whenever I release a new video. That's everything from me. I'll catch you on a bit. Deuces.